Well, it's Christmas week, so I thought, what better way to kick off this week than to talk about the Dragon Prince Season 4, but more specifically, Raylum. Because Rayla and Callum this season, well, that's been the question that's on my mind. What's up with them, and are they still going to be in a relationship in Season 5 and beyond? Well, we're going to talk about it today. And you might like my answers, and you might not. What's going on you guys, James here with another real video and today we're going to talk all about the Dragon Prince Season 4 and like I said, we're going to talk about Ray Lum and I'm so excited because if you missed it, I did drop all my reactions for Season 4 and some amazing content for you to dive into. Find that link down below to the playlist and some related vi videos floating around at the top. It can't even speak. But today we're going to focus in just on Rayla and Callum and we're going to dive into their moments together of course and who I felt could have been nicer to one another this season. So yeah, I guess we're going to answer the question, who was wrong in their relationship in season four? Ooh. Now before we get into all this juicy content, if it is your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James where I love talking about the Dragon Prince, movies, TV, and all the news in between. So if you do too, go ahead and hit the big red button below and subscribe to the channel guys. Tap on the bell and hit the thumbs up button so you can go ahead and uh, get this video out to more Dragon Prince fans because all that thumbs up does is really help this content and so many other videos. And guys, let me know in the comments below, who do you think was wrong, Rayla or Callum this season, and which Raylum moment was your favorite? Because like I said, we're going to break down each moment. And if I forgot any, let me know down below in the comments as well. All right, guys. Well, you know what? Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into every moment that Rayla and Callum share together. We'll talk about it and then we'll answer that question. I mean, who was at fault? So, of course, season four kicks off with a conversation in episode one between Callum and Ezrin. And yeah, Callum is talking about Rayla, this being the anniversary of her leaving him and also, of course, his birthday. But more importantly, the fact that Rayla left him. So if you were crying during that scene, I was too. And the writers are a little cheeky, right? Because they were setting it up as if when Rayla would appear, that Callum would be really happy. And that didn't seem to be the case, so let's transition now into their next interaction, or the next Raylum moment, which is episode 2, where, yes, that's this is the surprise moment of the season for me, where Rayla appears and Callum is shocked. It's been two years and now she shows up? I mean, he's probably thinking that, and also, oh my gosh, she's not dead, and I still love her, but I'm mad at her. So there's a lot of feelings Callum is feeling in this moment. And then, of course, they begin to speak to one another right shortly after that moment where Rayla tells Callum that he looks nice and Callum is being oddly dismissive. I mean, I get it. He's probably really upset that she just showed up out of the blue after two years with no explanation. I mean, just listen to this back and forth. Rayla says, I'm happy to see you again, Callum. And then Callum says, OK, he's eye rolling, side eyeing her and and then he just goes into this little anger moment where he says you just disappear for two years for no reason at all. So yeah, Callum is upset here. And honestly, I cannot blame him for being shocked and then a little frustrated. But see, me as a person, if I was waiting for the love of my life to reappear after two years after she left and I'm going to start crying again, then I would have been incredibly happy and in welcoming her with open arms. Sure, we'll talk about everything in a little bit, but like... I, I want to just be in this moment. So, I mean, Bait was me in this instance because there's a moment where Bait tells Callum in a roundabout way, like, hey, be reasonable. Just let Rayla stay here and just sit with you. And Rayla eventually does have a talk with Callum, but he's sleeping and then, of course, starts snoring and snorting, whatever that was. But Rayla admits that the best thing she ever had was Callum. And y'all, that got me. That got me good because... It just shows me that Rayla up to this point is incredibly regretful that she left for two years without even keeping constant communication because how would she? It's not like they have iMessage or anything to communicate with. But I know that Callum, in a way, it's like fighting this feeling of just welcoming her back 110%. Rayla is hopeful for that, but I almost feel like Rayla being as mature as she is, she's probably not expecting that right away. However, Callum being, you know, a little weird and giving her the cold shoulder was not what she expected. So then in episode four, there's another moment, right? Rayla already feels unsure of her place among Callum and the gang. And I, I get it. She's wondering, okay, are we good? Like, am I still a part of this group? King Ezrin being a king says, of course you are. Come on. And see, that is sweet to me 
because it just shows that Ezrin is being this facilitator between the two. Ezrin kind of already knows at this point, all right, maybe Callum does feel some type of way. But Ezrin is not willing to let that little spout break up their entire group. So yeah, I'm really glad, you know, the, the gang does in a roundabout way accept her, but I mean, not uh, not everyone does. I mean, I don't think Callum at this point wants to necessarily be around Rayla too often, but um, too bad because in episode four, y'all know what happens. Erevos controls Callum, and while it's not Callum speaking, I'm still gonna count this as a moment between Callum and Rayla because Erevos tells Rayla through Callum, of course, that she's a Moonshadow Assassin Elf who's incapable of killing. Now, that probably frustrated Rayla, even if it was Erevos or not. That would just make her mad. But because it came from Callum, like through Callum's body, I almost feel like maybe Rayla was cut a little bit deeper as a result. You know what I mean? Because if this was coming from Erevos, she would've been mad, whatever, but it came from Callum, so she was upset, and then she thought, oh, but Callum's being controlled, so it's not really Callum, but I still feel kind of weird about this. So there's a lot of rocky moments between Raylum this season, whether it's on purpose or through huh, Erevos, son of a gun. So in the next episode, in episode five, Rayla and Callum have an alone moment after Ibis's funeral ceremony. So this is the moment that I thought, of course, they were going to have basically a reconciliation. Okay, listen, I'm sorry for being upset at you, Rayla. Rayla would tell Callum, I love you. Callum would say, I love you. And then they would just kiss and it'd be great. Well, that didn't happen, of course, because we know who interrupts. Soren, ya bozo. Um, I don't know why he keeps interrupting <laughs> these moments, but in this moment, there was a lot to take away. Rayla was reflecting on Callum saving her from certain death, and then that makes Callum completely cry, because I believe in this moment, Callum was beginning to feel remorseful for his actions earlier in the season. I mean, listen guys, Callum is probably feeling a ton of emotions, right? Everything's stirring up inside of him, but at that point, I think he also remembered that, oh man, I, I really do love her. Like, what am I doing here? I'm fighting the feeling of being mad, but I shouldn't. I, I can't believe it. She almost died, and, and I'm going to act like this. She's been gone for two years, and now she's back. This is everything I could have asked for, right? Rayla's in front of me. But, you know, Callum will eventually work there, and we'll get there too in this breakdown. But I think that's why Callum was crying. And, of course, our friends go on their adventure, and Rayla volunteers her and Callum to go look for Rex's lair entrance. Although... Callum says no, and that he'll stay with Ezrin. <sighs> Callum, in this moment, I was so upset at him. Guys, why does Callum continue to act so immature? See, I do actually like the writing, now that I've sat with it and let it marinate a bit between Rayla and Callum, because it shows that Callum is, you know, like, battling a ton of things, right? And Rayla, at the same time, also has a dynamic uh, bit of emotion. She, she loves him. She wants him to be with her and her with him but he is pushing back so she's trying so hard to get with him and it, it is just so interesting to see the dynamic between both of them but yeah Callum you butthead and we know Callum still has an attitude because of his response he told Rayla you said you wanted an adventure right and that was just such a boneheaded move however I'm really glad that Ezra and Callum had this fireside chat where our king right he tells him like bro you need to chill well, not directly like that, but you get me. Callum says he doesn't know how to feel about Rayla and that he was happy and mad that she returned after two years. And while Ezrin is listening, I do feel like Ezrin is essentially trying to prove a point that, hey, bro, you still care for her, so why are you fighting it? All right, okay, so let's move on. Episode six, Rayla, of course, returns to their camp and tells them, hey, uh, I lost Soren." But even before that, when Rayla rushed to the campsite, Callum asks, Rayla, are you okay? Genuinely concerned for her. So it's like you see him overcoming that bit of anger little by little, right? But then Callum and Rayla eventually argue as this episode goes on because of the idea that they had to send Zim to help find the Earthblood Elves camp. Rayla tells Callum his idea was stupid. Ezrin interrupts and tells them to stop arguing. So... It's a lot of animosity at this point. This is when I thought, okay, maybe there's not too much more hope for Raylum this season, but it's what happens afterwards that really just uh, gave me hope again. Once Zim is rescued, they're all congratulating each other, and then Rayla and Callum go in for a hug, but then they pull back. At this point, I'm yelling, just kiss already. I know, I know, it's everything that I and many other Raylum fans want, 
but we didn't get this season. However, you can tell, right? It's like they're inching closer to that point in the middle where they're just like, you know what? Real love has no account for any wrongdoing, so I'm just going to go and dive in. Again, they're still young, so I, I understand that they're battling with a lot internally. However, it's these things that make me think like, just, just stop it and hug it out. And before we move on to episode 7, Callum eventually ends up consoling Rayla after Soren's presumable death by Scarmaker, the dragon in the Drakewood Forest. It is in episode 6 where I'm beginning to believe that Callum is thinking to himself, alright, I'm over it. I'm just, I'm over being upset. Like, I need to stop this. So, like I said, when we get to episode uh, 9, is it? Yeah, episode 9 is when they have that hug. I mean, again, we'll get there. But yeah, I'm telling you, episode 6 is that uh, moment where I think Callum got over the hump. In an episode 7, they have themselves another conversation where Callum is still easing Rayla's worries about Soren, but then after they build the breeze bubble, Callum wakes up Rayla and says they need to talk. And here I was thinking they were going to have a genuine one-on-one -on -one conversation, but Rayla tell or sorry, Callum tells Rayla, "Um, kill me." Yeah, like no dummy, Rayla's not going to kill you, but I get it because Callum doesn't want to be taken control of by Erevos again. It could be dangerous since Callum's a high mage. So, you know, Rayla is not doing this. Rayla still loves Callum, uh, is not going to kill Callum in any degree. And then in episode 8, Callum has a moment with Rayla after she gives up her blades to Rex Igneous. It's like Callum again is consoling Rayla and I'm like, all right, homie, I see you. I see you. Can we get together? It's like that song, right? Can we talk for a minute? Like it's, I'm just like, Callum, just do it. Lean in, hug, kiss, do whatever you're going to do. But I need that Ray Lim moment. And luckily we do get it in a way in episode nine. So in the season four finale, Callum thinks Rayla is dead and didn't make it out of Rex's lair. So he is breaking down completely in shambles with one of Rayla's blades. And this is the moment to me when Callum realizes Man, I was completely foolish in being mad at Rayla for so long, and he does still love her. And then when she sticks her hand out of the gravel, and then Rayla is like, I I'm, I'm still here, dog. And then Callum runs over and hugs her. They have that oh, genuine hug, and then the whole gang joins in, whatever, fine, that's cool. But like, them two, Rayla and Callum, hugging it out. I'm like, alright, so season 5, they're gonna be alright. Like, they're gonna be cool. They're gonna be back together. So now that we've gone through every single Raylum moment in an interaction in season four, it's time to answer the question, who is at fault for Raylum not being a thing earlier in season four? Are we placing the blame on Callum or on Rayla? All right, so let's go ahead and break this down. Now, I don't have a Venn diagram to pull up on screen, but let's begin with Callum here. Callum, to me, gave a very realistic response to the love of his life, abandoning him for two years and then coming back un- announced so i get it he had to still work through his feelings i mean at one point you'd have to imagine callum thought rayla was dead and that's probably why he was so remorseful not being able to spend more time with her understanding that they went through so much from seasons one through three that now that's when she decides to leave in this two-year time skip so much has happened since then but callum is a romantic at heart i believe that not only did he not lose any love for Rayla, but that he had to fight and overcome the reaction that he felt was appropriate instead of going with his heart. Because I believe Callum's heart was speaking quite a bit, quite loudly actually, in episode 7. So there's a lot that's going on with Callum internally. He's the High Mage of Catullus. He's trying to find Erevos, uh, you know, and then he's also battling romantically with uh, the relationship between him and Rayla. So the man has a lot on his shoulders. So I don't know. It's tough to place any blame, but maybe we'll place a little bit of blame on. Well, we'll talk about that. Let's now look at Rayla, right? Rayla to me is genuinely someone who is an empath, right? She cares so much about not only Callum, of course, but Ezrin, Bait, Soren. I mean, we see that all season long and she genuinely missed being with her friends. But to me, in that short story that of course we covered right here on the channel, I do believe she was going out to try and find Veer and kill him and save and hopefully protect Callum and the rest of Katola. So she took it upon herself. However, we're going to pump the brakes a little bit because 
Nobody asked her to do that. See, that is one thing that I will give to Callum that, you know, he never asked Rayla, go and protect me and leave me for two years. Rayla decided to do that on her own. And I knew, and I should say, I know that if Rayla were to ask Callum, hey, you know, are you cool with me leaving for two years? He would say absolutely not. So that's why she left at the drop of a dime and only left a goodbye letter. I just don't necessarily think that was the right move on Rayla's part. So again, with all that I've talked about and all that we know now about Rayla and Callum, who is wrong here? And I hope this isn't a weird or roundabout answer, right? But I think it's wrong on both sides. Now, okay, if I had to pick exactly one person, I do think the reason we didn't get a proper, proper Rayla moment, right? You know, like a kiss and them reconciliating and all that in season four, it is Callum's fault, right? But Rayla is wrong for leaving for two years not checking in on Callum, and also not discussing this with him ahead of time. So I can place the blame on Rayla for Callum being upset, but I can't blame Rayla for Callum's anger when she's back. Like, I think Callum should have got over by episode three. To be completely honest with you, I should. I, I think he should have been like, yeah, you know what? All right. Like, I'm, I'm like a little mad, but like, you're here, you're safe. I'm good, girl. I love you. You know what I mean? That would have been, a, I think, a better response. I mean, again, that's me talking about it from my perspective. Now, Callum is still younger, right? So he's not necessarily, um, you know, being proactive. He's being reactive to the situation. So I, I do think that we place the blame on Rayla's shoulders for Callum being so upset for two years. But when Rayla's back, we gotta blame Callum for not giving us that Rayla moment, right? I believe Callum was wrong up until episode seven again, and then we get episode nine, and then they're hugging it out. So it's like, homie, you could not have done this earlier. <laughs> Dang it. So yeah, that, that's my answer. Uh, I hope that helps clear some things up, but I'm curious, let me know in the comments, who do you think is wrong here? Is it Rayla or is it Callum? right and which Raylum interaction was your favorite in season four so there you have it guys it's a full breakdown of every Raylum moment and that discussion topic that's been hot among the fandom right i mean everyone's trying to place the blame on one side or the other but i think in a crazy way if you're looking at the pre-season four activity you place the blame on Rayla but if you're looking at the context of within season four you gotta place the blame on Callum so again there you have it y'all thanks so much for tuning in that is my discussion video for the day but don't miss out on any content for the rest of this week because we got a lot of coming oh my gosh i got reviews dropping we got to talk about some fun stuff i mean it's almost christmas time so i mean who knows maybe i put my 10 best movies of 2022 list out before christmas or maybe a little bit after. I don't know. I got a lot of gifts to wrap. But don't don't miss any of that, guys. Go ahead and hit subscribe down below. And go ahead and hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. And hit the thumbs up button again if you enjoyed this bit of content. Guys, this was so much fun. Thanks so much for sticking with me. And I appreciate y'all watching. And I'll catch you at the next screening. All right. Whew, I got to go decompress, y'all. I don't do yoga, but I need to do yoga after this video. Whew.